In this video, we replace this Wi-Fi 5 outdoor access point with this Wi-Fi 6 outdoor access point. So this is the outside of our office cottage thing. That's a Unify Flex HD access point, which is Wi-Fi 5 and outdoor rated. And I'm going to replace it with this Unify U6 mesh access point, which is Wi-Fi 6, not 6E. Six. Uh, and because naming, they look exactly the same, but this one's called U6 mesh and this one's called Flex HD. I don't know either. So uh, first, let's have a look at what's in the box. It's an access point and then uh, install it. And then I want to talk a little bit about the antennas in these devices. So that's the box of the U6 mesh. Now, if you enjoy videos about new hardware from Unify and other manufacturers for that matter, then uh, consider subscribing. And if this is your first video, welcome. Thank you. Anyway, let's just have a look at this before we install it, see what's in the box. Uh, so, you know, if you've ever seen anything Unify, this experience should be very familiar because they're all very much the same. That's not a bad thing. They always come in a very beautiful box that uh, it displays the, the device right up front. As soon as you get it off! There you go. So there's the, I call it the soda can device because it has that sort of feeling of a soda can. Um, so this is very similar. I think I can even use the same bracket as on the other one. Um, very similar device as to the Flex HD, except this is of course Wi-Fi 6. So we have the device itself. It's quite heavy. It's made from metal, aluminum, I think, mainly. A bit of plastic. Um, you don't have to install it the way I'm going to on, the, on a post like that. You can also have it uh, sticking down from the ceiling, you know, uh, the antenna, I believe, at the top here. Or you can mount it on, um, on a flat wall, a uh, post, whatever. There's many options. In here we have, oh, this one. Oh, right, I didn't expect this. This one comes with PoE. So here's an AF, um, so 802.11AF U uh, power over ethernet adapter. So if you don't have a switch, which I do, which is actually right up there, then you can use this to power the access point as well. So I'm not going to use that. Um, and here's the power cord as well. So I'm actually not going to use that side at all. Very neat power cord as always. Um, but that's for the PoE adapter here. If you don't have a switch uh, available with PoE, then you can draw power from. And then, of course, here's all the brackets. So here's the, um, the mount for the pole or wall, which is what I'm using outside. Um, I, well, we'll see if it's the same one. And here's some zip ties. And of course, we have the bottom bracket here, which goes in here instead of this indoor one. We have an outdoor bracket here as well. Um, and there's some screws. But that's it. There's nothing else in the box. Um, pretty simple, I think. So. Um, Let's go and swap them over. All right, so that's the Flex HD. That's the Wi-Fi 5 device that's already on there. And here's the new one. So I'm just basically gonna swap them over. And uh, for the uh, keen, eagle-eyed viewer, yes, that is a blue indoor Cat6 cable. I am fully aware of that. Uh, why you shouldn't use Cat6 outdoor, uh, indoor cabling outdoors, I made a whole video on that, so go check that out, why outdoor cabling is important. And with that in mind, I'm gonna keep using this for a little bit <laughs> until I replace it. So let's install this new Wi-Fi 6 device instead of the old Wi-Fi 5 device. Yeah, that's uh, outdoor for you. Yep, it gets a bit crusty. So let's see if we can use the same bracket as before. So I'm gonna take this indoor one, that's for indoor use, off. And let's see if we can just do a complete plug and play replacement in situ. Let's have a look. Oh. Hey, I think it worked. So, stick that back on like that. Take the cover off. That, that's it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. So um, let's have a look at the Unified controller and I'll explain something about the 
M U M I M O and tennis that I in all these devices because I just figured it out. So before we get into adopting the U6 mesh into my network controller, I just want to look at the product page for the actual AP because there's a there's a couple of things that I now know are important that I've always kind of not understood. Um, so on the features here, it says Wi-Fi 6 support. That's great, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. And then it has 5.3 gigabits, gigabits per second aggregated throughput rate. And I always sort of knew that, ah, my device is never gonna get that. Um, it sounds like a large number, larger is better. But other than that, I didn't really know what that meant. Um, so I thought I'll just explain my understanding of what that is. And to do that, let me scroll down here. Well, before I do that, actually just, uh, it has a horizontal antenna pattern. So these are designed for outside to like a large coverage area rather than directional, it's very wide uh, or rounded. And then it has IPX5 rated, so it's waterproof, right? That's why it can be outside. But back to the antenna. So down here under the product summary, under the hardware, there is, of course, the power consumption. That's important because when you connect it to a switch, as you'll see in a minute, that all goes into your power budget. Um, it has transmission power, which is also great, 22 and 26. That's reasonably powerful, I think. But the MIMO is what uh, I'm really interested in. So you can see here that these um, access points has M-U-M-I-M-O, M-U-M-I-M-O. That stands for multi-user, multi-in, multi-out, or multi-input, multi-output. And that is important because the two by two means that you can have two concurrent devices um, connected over the 2.4 gigahertz and equivalently four equivalent device uh, uh, concurrent devices uh, connected to the five gigahertz but there's more to it than that so that's that's great uh, most of the high-end access points like this one is will now have four by four for five gigahertz uh, or and four by four for six gigahertz like if you looked at my u6 enterprise um, video which is usually there you can see that uh, that has that as well for the 6 gigahertz band, which is on Wi-Fi 6E. But your device, such as maybe a phone, can also have these antennas, which is 2x2 two two or even 4x4, four four, which means that a single device can use all of those four bands. So your access point can communicate with your device over four separate channels or four separate pieces of the bandwidth of, say, the 5 gigahertz band which means that you can get this throughput. So the aggregate, aggregated throughput does mean that if you have a device that has a 4x4 antenna in it, and I'm not even sure which devices have that, you can look that up, you can get these very, very high throughput rates. And that is kind of the idea of Wi-Fi 6. We want really fast throughput rate on Wi-Fi 6 because with Wi-Fi 5, you'd only get a couple of hundred megabits usually. So Wi-Fi 6, you can go over a gigabit um, or up to about, I think it's 800 megabit or something. Anyway, someone correct me in the comments. But the cool thing is that more and more devices will come with these more advanced antennas, which means you can take advantage of the bandwidth so you can have four separate streams of data between the access point and your device. And I guess magic finds out how to make it all come in in the right stream, in the right order. Um, so that's important, these two by two and four by four. It does actually make a difference. So if your Wi-Fi is lagging, um, if you are doing a lot of say gaming over, wi or over Wi-Fi uh, or streaming even, because streaming can take a lot of bandwidth depending on the resolution, then having these four by four antennas is actually gonna make a difference. It might not make a difference to the device you're streaming on, but it won't clog down all the other devices on the Wi-Fi. So yeah. That's my understanding of it, and I think that's really important. Um, having said that, if I go back to the Flex HD here, which is the uh, access point that I replaced, and I do have a plan for that, which I'll get to at the end of the video, um, you can see here that it also has 4x4 antennas for MIMO, but it may not, I'm not sure, it doesn't say, but it may not be multi-user. So in this case, it can only do one device at a time if they're not MU MIMO. 
right? So this would only be relevant if you had a device with a 4x4 gigahertz antenna. Now these, it may be multi-user, even though it doesn't say so, I'm not sure, uh, but there is a difference. So in, these also have, the old one also has 4x4 antenna for the 5 gigahertz band, but at Wi-Fi 5 speeds, not Wi-Fi 6. Hence, if you look at the throughput up here in the overview, um, you can see here 1.7 gigabits throughput rate, whereas the U6 mesh has 5.3 gigabits, so three times higher because it's Wi-Fi 6. So with that in mind, let's adopt the U6 mesh into my network controller. And here is my UDM SE. You can see there's already there's popped up saying, hey, there's a new device. So I'm just going to do it from here. I'm just going to say add that and it will take me into the network controller, take me to the U6 mesh and it will start. Well, I think I'll have to click adopt. Let's have a look. Um, there we go. No, it just took me in there. Oh, no, it is adopting it. You can see it on here. All right. So there's a bit of a shortcut. Uh, now, if I click on this here, you can see all the various features of this access point, even though it's actually not running just yet. So again, here you can see 2.4 gigahertz has 2.2, but Wi-Fi 6 and 5 gigahertz has uh, 4 megahertz uh, channels uh, or band channels, bands, mm. um, <laughs> with a 4x4 antenna, also on Wi-Fi 6. Um, so the I, I talked a lot about this in my uh, video on U6e on how you, the, the channel widths are very important, which is why we have 6 gigahertz band now on Wi-Fi 6e. We get, we get larger chunks of bandwidth for our devices that now consume more and more data. And we can see here's the uplink, so it's, it's connected to my switch, my Office 24 PoE switch, and it's running at 6 watts. So the more devices you have on it, the more it needs to work, the more watts it'll consume, um, which has an impact on your power budget for your switch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the overview. I had an IP address, um, etc. If I go to the, oh, here we go. Actually, this is a good point here. So I knew this. This device is connected to an Office 24, to the Office 24 PoE switch, which has limited power availability. Yeah, I'm running close to the edge of my 95 watts power budget for that switch, which is why there might be a video coming soon on uh, upgrading that as well. So let's go to uh, insights. So here's the RF environment as any other access point on Unify. This should all look very familiar. Uh, the key to me using this particular access point is that it's outdoor rated. I can hear outside and overlooking uh, sort of the, the area, the common area we have outside. Um, and of course it has quite good range as well. And if I look at the settings, I am now going to rename this because I rename all my access points, otherwise I can't find anything. And we're gonna call this guest cottage. And yes, we're gonna manage that by global AP settings. I usually leave that on. I don't tend to actually change anything in the default unless I absolutely have to. Um, so I'm gonna apply changes, which is just changing the name for it. Cottages, which is down here, is indeed offline. Or did it just go offline, I didn't notice? Anyway, so I'm going to go to the one that is offline. And I'm going to remove that we don't need that in the controller anymore there we go so here we go and i'm gonna forget that and it's gonna go oh no are you sure yes i'm sure it's a bit of cleanup here i'm sorry i get confused naming's hard three hardest thing in technology or software development it's naming occasion validation and off by one errors that's now running let's see if we got any anyone connected to it nope no clients yet but that's the Unify Wi-Fi 6, U6, Mesh. The naming is a bit confusing, confusing, especially going from Flex HD to U6 Mesh because the outdoor mesh is the one with the bunny ears. Yes. Okay, now I did say I was gonna mention what I, uh, cause people have asked me, what do I use the access points for that I replace? Uh, some of my giveaway to friends and family that need them. Um, this particular one, I actually have an idea of creating another solar powered site on the property. And this will be the access point. There'll be a camera. There'll be a, obviously a wireless link to it. And there'll be a full solar setup. So that might be an interesting video coming in the future. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
Um, if there's anything that I missed with this, it's pretty simple. Um, if you want more no, no to, if you want to know more about this U6 mesh, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the video. And with that, I will see you next time.